right, guys. Um, just a quick little word of advice when it comes to uh, using table saws. Um, any kind of power tools, obviously, you want to be aware of the safety rules. But you know what I've personally found is that if you keep your fingers out of the way of most saw blades, you know they don't uh, they don't jump out at your fingers, right? But uh, a table saw can be a little bit different. The blade is spinning towards you all the time, and it's just it has a tendency to try to kick a product back at you if there's a problem so a problem would be that you're not pushing it up against the fence you know there you might be tight on one side and then there's a gap on the other that's you can't really cut diagonally very well on a table saw so that's gonna end up kicking it back at you if there happens to be a really you know hard knot in there and you're not pushing it down on the table and against the fence it can kick it back at you if there happens to be a nail in the stock same thing so you know it's it's just kind of common sense I, I suggest if you're going to use uh, especially a table saw you know you, you take a look at how to use it safely we had a um, a friend of ours in the renovations industry and he was cutting a board he was not using a little stand like I have there at the end of, uh, of my saw and consequently when you're using long um, long products like that and you're pushing it through the cuts almost done but the weight is is moving your board right and it started to fall so he reached to grab it and cut off all four of his fingers on one hand uh, it, you know one of our other friends got him to the hospital and thank goodness for the the awesome doctors that got all his fingers put back together and you know we can have a joke or two about it now you know I mean he, you know he says you know I knew something was wrong right away I just couldn't put my finger on it and uh, the doctors asked him what uh, what he thought of his little maneuver there and he said well but at that time but all I could give it was a thumbs up so again we can joke about it now but uh, please whatever you do be safe when it comes to power tools they'll do for a cold frame Certainly looks like we made some sawdust. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. So here's all the uh, two by fours that I basically created out of the four by fours. Just been cutting those in half. And so I'm just kind of laying out my sides here. I've, uh, I don't know, I think I've come to the conclusion that you, you don't really need to do on a whole lot of overthinking on this. The first uh, frame that I did was at a 45 degree angle, which would be more like this, it's very, very steep. The one that I want to put in front of it, I don't want that steep. I don't want it casting, casting a shadow when the sun's sitting so much lower you know, because we've tilted up. So, um, I'm just basically using the material as a guide. So we've got, you know, we've got five boards. So it's, I'm going to dig it down probably at least up to one board into the ground. I still want some sticking up because I mean, we do get snow and I don't want to have the snow bank here, right? And I got to open the door up through it. So, but I basically just went from the corner and met up with the next board and I just took my tape measure and just made sure that it was uh, the, the basically the length of the door now this is the side piece so there's going to be front and backs that get put on these are an inch and a half thick so there's going to be inch and a half here and an inch and a half on the other side when it's done the total needs to be what the door is which is basically 32 so this line here needs to be 29 and an inch and a half and an inch and a half on that side make it the 32 that the door is so just took the tape measure put it up there came down and just moved it until okay that's where it is on that board perfect drew the line now I did take my speed square to I was just kind of curious what you know what sort of an angle this actually was and it's basically a 22 and a half so it's a half of a 45 basically by and then this is just sort of I don't know locking out whatever but with these boards three and a half inches 
that's how that worked out so I'm just gonna take the circular saw I mean this could be done on the table saw this could be uh, those are pretty long pieces to be holding up on a miter saw uh, jigsaw would do this handsaw obviously um, just gonna use simple jigsaw I'm gonna cut this and cut this and then uh, I shall be I shall return here we go There you go, there's a side. So now, obviously none of this is attached to itself or anything, so what we're gonna do is we're going to cut a piece. I need a piece right here on the end for the front. I guess with two by fours, I could just screw the two by four into here. Yeah, I could probably do that. So I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces, cut the end on a uh, 22 and a half and screw those together and one on the end there and I'll put some screws in here and here to keep that all solid and uh, yeah I guess uh, whatever we shall return all right so for these little pieces of strapping or whatever you'd like to call it if you know if you don't have any any tools or like what angle is that I don't know if that's a 22 and a half or if you only went, you know, two boards down to two instead of, or sorry, four boards down to two instead of five boards down to two, it's pretty easy to do. Just get this as square as you can on the board. Grab yourself a pencil. Hang it over. Come up top. Make a mark there. Make a mark there. Connect those lines. And then uh, go ahead and go ahead and give it a cut. I'll do it this way since it's a little easier for me with the saw. Now that should be pretty darn close, All right? So obviously another mark here, cut that, another piece for over there, and we got one side done. Ta-da! All right, y'all. Next thing that we want to do is pre-drill some holes here for our screws so that we're not splitting the end wood here. And then just repeat the process on the other end and add boards we'll check back all right so it was as simple as screwing in the other four boards on the back and then of course the two boards on the front put your door on and screw the hinges in all right so we might as well show you the finished finished project so again you know with the sides those angles cut, that holds those boards together. Holds those ones together. A little screw in there, a little screw in there. Sides are done. Your back, I don't think I brought it up. I thought it was common sense, but it's the same length as the door. All right, and there you go. I did bury it in about a, about a board down. Dug that out actually all the way down to the clay. And then uh, uh, a bunch of uh, the potato bins and stuff that I have uh, emptied as well as uh, I went through and uh, sifted all my compost again So started the beets in trays started the lettuce in trays, but uh, What are we today Friday? I did this on the long weekend. So this went in the ground on Monday. This is mustard seed or mustard greens They're like a 21 day crop. I didn't know that that's like quick like radishes so got those in and and rocking uh, it basically just dug a hole and leveled it to the best of my ability. I mean, I don't want it all lopsided, but I did try to slope. Well, I didn't try. I sloped the um, the dirt in there as well, the soil, 
which is going to allow the sun to hit it more at a right angle as opposed to if it was flat it would be hitting it hitting it at a little bit of a different angle just trying to get it as much sun as possible because we sure don't get much in the winter so there's the original one that's at a 45 so this one's kind of at a 22 and a half i like the look of that way more i just don't know if i've given myself enough room for for things to grow in there granted they're not going to be just banging in the winter but you know what i mean it still needs uh, still needs some room to grow uh, this one went in, oh, I don't know, maybe about a week before. You can tell the lattice is bigger, beets are bigger. Here's the mustard in here. Got Swiss chard there and then two different types of lettuce. So that, what's having her? That's all coming up, all coming up aces. And uh, I know when, uh, when I first did that uh, sort of an overview of how I was going to make this one here, um, you know, I had a couple of suggestions, Judy. Um, my YouTube buddy there um, said, you know, well, like I don't, don't really have the saws and everything to do those angles, you know, but I do have a shovel, you know, so I, I can just dig a hole and sink one end in farther than the other. And like I said, I believe that's something that I'm going to try. So I did. I just built a box for the third door. And it's three boards high all the way around. So one board exposed on that side, two on this side three on that side so basically i'm angling down into the sun and we get the southwest coming this way so there we go there's the thank you judy thank you judy that was uh that was a great idea i mean it made building it that much uh, that much easier i just watered these so we'll shut these up and uh let them uh let them keep growing but uh I just want to thank uh, Sophie Daly, who uh, I've had enough communications with her. She's not just a YouTube friend anymore; she's a friend. She wanted a little bit more, uh, a little bit more detail on these. Hopefully, this video gives you a bit more. And uh, Dan from Home in the Sticks, sure enough, a good fellow there, Dan. All right, he wanted a little bit more detail. So I think the, the toughest thing is just getting your sides right because the front and the back should be fairly straight pieces, right? So again, you know, hopefully this didn't bore anybody a couple of these in a row, but boy, these are sure handy. They're going to help me extend it hopefully at least a month and it'll let me get started a month earlier and, you know, hey, I guess we'll, we'll see how they work. All right. Thanks again. Have a great day.